Hey YouTube, it's Craig here and I'm back with a new video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the only Waterman pen you actually need. Well, in my opinion. All right, I might be a little biased in this just cause I am a Waterman collector, but so the Waterman 52 can be found in many different styles. So these are gold filled. This is a half size gold filled one. The Sterling Silver Basket Weave. Uh, this is the Gothic pattern. This is a hand engraved vine employee pen which has a um, extra fine account nib on it i restored that one myself here's a late 20s red ripple that has its original price sticker on the bottom of it here's my first one in this collection it has a crack in the cap you can see it's a little wonky but i bought this for 80 dollars so you can find them in various conditions uh this is a, a user grade like i'd be happy using this the problem is the cap it just an, because of that crack in there, it doesn't ever stay on. But it has a really nice nib on it. This one has a super flexible nib. It has that little tiny G on it from the factory. Don't know why that G's there. And the wood grain hard rubber. Here's an earlier one, it's on a 52. It's a 12 PSF, but it's the same exact thing. And this one is mint. Got this from the San Francisco Pen Show. This has been my daily carry pen. It is a 752 which means that all of the furniture on it is 14 karat gold and this one has a beautiful stub nib so this is actually going to be the one i'm going to be doing my writing sample with and this is the earliest version of it it is a 12 psf but it is a waterman 52 with no clip really early threads on it it actually has on the lever it says patent applied for and it is a spring-loaded lever so you can actually remove this. There's no sack in it right now, but it is a spring-loaded lever. The later ones are not spring-loaded. And therefore, when you actuate the lever, it snaps back down only because the sack is pushing on the lever. So not spring-loaded, it just drops back down because of the pressure from the sack. Plus there are other sizes as well. So if you wanted like a half size, these are all viable options. They're all the same size nib. And they are all lever fillers. You know, it's a smaller, thinner pen. So if you have little hands, it works really well. If you have bigger hands, you might go with something slightly larger. These are so easy. You just pull the lever down, stick this in a bottle of ink, push up on the lever and it's filled. You're ready to write. But I am gonna focus on this very nice user grade 52. I paid $250 for this pen and then I switched out the nib from another 52 that I had that was in somehow worse shape than this one. And if I ever needed to switch out the nibs, I have lots of spare nibs for these guys. So these are all New York nibs and these are all Canadian miscellaneous. I have a 2A nib in here and registered US. So a lot of these if they were made in the New York factory, they say New York on them. I believe that's how it works. If they say registered US, they were probably made in the uh, Newark, New Jersey factory or elsewhere. But I'm pretty sure these are all from their New York building that they had just down the street from 191 Broadway and 173 Broadway. But this is the perfect pen size for me. It's not the only Waterman you need. Uh, there's no pen you actually need. I mean, maybe a ballpoint for day-to-day -day use, but if you were gonna get into a Waterman, I recommend starting with a 52, whether it's a uh, black hard rubber one, the classic black hard rubber 52, or a uh, if you wanna get into something more fancy like a Ripple, or if you wanna get into something even more fancy, hand engraved vine, these are really, really cool. Even the hand engraved clip and the hand engraved lever, beautiful pens, or the really, common basket weave. This is from after 1924, beautiful. This is the oriental pattern, which I think after 1918, they stopped making these. Or, you know, the classic Gothic. Same exact thing, just a different overlay. Now, again, if you have slightly bigger hands, I recommend maybe doing a 54, 55, 56. All it's gonna change is the thickness on a 54, the nib is, is different. The section is slightly different. The rest of it is the same size. 
if you do a 55, it's a little bit thicker. 56, a little bit thicker. 58, very thick. Much, much bigger pen. And honestly, the 58s are a little overkill for me. I uh, much prefer, you know, you don't even need to post it, but I much prefer the smaller 52 to a 58 just because I have little hands. And But if you have really big honking hands, then go for it. Knock yourself out. Get, a, get yourself a 58. Uh, the only problem is it's going to have a much higher price tag, $800 versus $250. Now, here you go. Here's a 58 Red Ripple versus a 52 Red Ripple. This one has its original price tag. I paid 200, I think $200 for this one. And this one was $1,250, so $1,000 more for the much larger pen. So there you go. There are so many good nibs out there and we are gonna do a writing sample. But first, I'm gonna start by showing you how you fill these pens. I'm using Waterman Tender Purple, which I bought off Amazon for $8 a bottle. I also really like this ink because it has a really kind of cool greenish sheen to it. You can actually see on the inside of the cap, see that green sheen? I think it's super cool. So you pull down the lever. This already has ink in it, so I'm going to be very careful and pull down the lever. Stick the pen in the ink and push up on the lever. It is totally filled now. Wipe off any excess. As far as paper goes, I'm using this Muji paper. I bought this like years ago. It is a dot grid paper, but it writes so good. This is actually a 752, which has 14 karat gold. And this is from around, based off of the imprint, I'm going to say this is from around eh, like 1920. And it's a stub nib with some flex. And this really beautiful nib is from New York. Number two size nib, that's the two and 52. So we'll do my new logo. One seven three Broadway. I'm still working on that, but yeah, that's basically my new logo for my future YouTube merchandise and my virtual museum and all that. But yeah, just really, really. It's very smooth, excellent New York nib. That little stub. I got really lucky because the nib itself is worth what I pretty much paid for the pen. And then this pen, I just, I love it so much. I love the little AP on it. I don't know who AP was, but they had really fine taste pens. And then of course you can see the 752 on the back, but great pen, highly recommend this, the 52. Every time I talk to someone at a pen meetup or, or what have you, I always say, if you're gonna start with, if you wanna get into Waterman, start with a 52. Um, a lot of people that are first getting into antique pens i mean they're users they want to use these pens and i this is my daily carry user pen i take this to work with me at disneyland and i just i highly recommend getting a 52 and you know get one that you want to use get get one that you want to write with and if you need a nib or something like that you, you can go on ebay and you can look up like any of these sort of cheaper 52 and a half V's or something and say you get you find a, a pretty good 52 But you don't have a nib that's good You can go on there and, and get one of these cheaper 52 and a half V's because nobody really collects these I do but like nobody really collects these and you can find a nib 
off one of these and then put it on your other pen. They are the same size nibs. They are just number two size nibs. So yeah, that's what I recommend. Or um, there are several dealers that I highly recommend. So as far as finding user grade pens for a pretty good price, check out Peyton Street Pens. She has a lot of great options as far as user grade 52s. So check them out and they're really a bit good for prices under $200 for a really, and there's writing samples and all that. Check out vintagepens.com, David Nishimura. There's a lot of different options as far as uh, more higher grade pens. That's where I got this oriental pattern. It's an 0512 and a half PSF, which is the same thing, but you can, you can find this exact pen as an 0552 and a half um, gold filled oriental pen. Uh, it'll cost you about $900, but he has really good high grade things on, on his website. Contact my friend, uh, Mike Daigle, Mad Mercantile. I found this for, I think $200 and it's just minty, minty, minty fresh. Um, so look up Mad Mercantile on Instagram. He usually has a lot of really great selections. I actually purchased uh, my 52 and a half V. It also has the pencil that goes with it with Ruth McNary on the side. But this was all from him. I paid 250 for the whole set with the box. You guys can always message me on Instagram if you need any help with anything. Um, again, you know, at Craig Rockanova, check me out. <laughs> If you have any questions you can message me you can leave a comment on this video and i'm happy to really answer any of your questions about these pens i mean this is my life now my life now is all about waterman's and the 52 is a wonderful place to start and that's the video thanks so much for checking out you guys if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up please subscribe for more content like this and check out my instagram at craig rockanova and of course, I will be at the California Pen Show this week from Thursday the 9th until Sunday, February 12th. It'll be a lot of fun to hang out with my friends and I'm looking to possibly sell some things from my collection. So I'm looking forward to that as well as hopefully finding some grail items that I've been looking for for this collection for a while. So we'll see what happens at the show. Check out my uh, website, 173 Broadway, where I'll be updating more and more things with my collection. It's just taking me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but you know, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Cool merch is coming soon, and yeah, just lots of good things coming this year. All right, you guys, we'll see you in the next video. All right, peace.